Thursday. It is quarter after five, February the 8th. I have had an uneventful day for you to show anything. I have conquered almost all of my bunny box minis. I have two more colorways to go. So I started first thing this morning, just finished up. Actually, I just took a hot, hot bubble bath. So that's why I'm so red. I used some of those bath salts I showed in the video last night. Um, Minik gave us some, I think it's like ca cannabis bath salts, but the cannabis is like the hemp seed oil and Epsom salts. Oh, it's really nice, it smelled so good. So I just took a really, nice hot shower or bubble bath and now I am getting ready to get supper ready. We are just going to have, I took some scallops out of the freezer and I'm going to throw some rice in the slow cooker or the rice cooker and probably just saute up some asparagus. So not much happening today but I thought I would throw on a sweater to show you. And I literally have like my sweatpants on <laughs> and was like, well, I think I need to show you this sweater. I've seen a couple of other people have it on lately. My friend Steph had it on in an Instagram post the other day. Gina from Skein Cocaine had it on her um, most recent podcast. So it uh, motivated me to dig mine out. So I did this a couple of years ago. It's, a, it's another Caitlin Hunter pattern. Um, I remember when she came out with it and I mean, I thought it was a cool, pretty pattern and had no desire to knit it. I think cause I just was like the halibut fish weren't for me, but then I started to see other people make them. And what really caught my eye is, I wish I had a screenshot of, of her who it was, but anyway, she had it in cream and then like cobalt blue fish. And I was like, yeah, that pattern is beautiful. I want to make it because I, I do love knitting Caitlin Hunter patterns. I'm still like really hot from my bath. I'm sweating to death. Um, anyway, yeah, so I knit it and I decided to get out of my comfort zone and try different colors. And at that moment, I was really uh, wanting to buy some of Sonder Yarns try out some of their um, bases and the Sunday morning DK looked really nice and went online and decided to grab these two colors. So this deep olive green is called Wanderlust and this goldy mustardy color is called um, Full English. So yeah, it's the Sunday morning DK. Anyway, look. I still have, like, I knit this years ago and I still have ends to weave in, but I'm like tucking them in for, for, for this video. Anyway, I, again, this is when I, I would have knit it when I wasn't doing Ravelry. So, but what I could say is I know for sure it would have been the large or the size three, however the pattern um, goes with the sizes. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. I love this yarn. 
this yarn is gorgeous it's it's a soft yet a little rusticy anyway I love it and it was in my closet and seeing other people have theirs on made me realize I've got to dig this out give it a steam <laughs> and put it on so I'm gonna wear that this sweater this weekend because it, it is beautiful and it kind of got just put away and forgotten about I don't remember how I felt about knitting this pattern um, I I love I love anything that Caitlin Hunter makes, to be honest. I find all of her patterns very easy to follow. So anyway, just wanted to share it with you. Caitlin Hunter, The Halibut in Sunday Morning DK, Wanderlust, Full English. Yeah, so check out this pattern. I love it. So I was going through my... Um, YouTube comments this morning trying to answer you all like just you know whether you've left me just a little good morning or had a quick question um, try to I do read them all it's just answering them all but there was a lot of the same questions so I thought that's something I could do here is just answer a couple of the questions that quite a few people have asked um, and during vlogmas I got this question too where do I get my pajamas honestly they just have accumulated, but uh, uh, the main brands would be L.L. Bean, Aerie. Aerie has great pajamas. That's like the sister's store to American Eagle. Um, Urban Outfitters, Free People. Free People, I mean, Free People are pricier for pajamas um, for sure, but they do have a beautiful selection. So... But yeah, so that's where I get my jammies. Um, am I going to die in my new home? Yes, I will be. Same same deal. I die in my garage here. Uh, so same thing, I'll have a setup in my garage. But what's going to be better is I'm going to have a set tub in my garage. Like right now, when you walk into my house from the garage, there's a mud room and then a laundry room. I take buckets and fill up water in the set tub in the laundry room, take it out to the garage and work with it. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but I am going to have a set tub in my new garage, which is going to make life a lot easier. Just saving that extra step and yeah, so yes, I will definitely continue dying when I move. I'm not moving far. I'm moving like a five minute drive from this house just to um, another neighborhood. Uh, yeah, it's just time to move. I've been here for 24 years. It's just sell the house while it's still a nice home. Uh, it's, it's, I'm going to build it like a three bedroom home, but this has different space. It's more it's a great home for a young family and this neighborhood is great for a young family the schools and and everything that are handy uh, so yeah I'm just I'm building just a different layout like more of a, a layout to grow old in but I'm still gonna have um, a couple of extra bedrooms for my kids so if they ever need a transitional place to be then they can always come home and yes, I'm going to miss my best friend living almost next door. But like I said, it's like a five minute drive. So we all have electric scooters and bikes. So <laughs> if we do have cocktail hour and need to like go back and forth, we can do that still, still easily. And um, yeah, so a lot of people asked about that. Journaling, how do I keep everything accessible? Honestly, because it's an organized mess. <laughs> if, if you if you buy all this stuff, you want to use it. If you put it away and keep like too organized, you're going to forget about it. And while you're sitting here, you don't want to dig. So I do like everything just kind of set up just like so. Um, I do have like a little cart over here with more stamps and that's where I keep my inks and uh, stickers. And I, I showed it during Vlogmas, those books that I keep my st stickers organized. So that's another thing when I move. I do intend on getting another, like this is an L-shaped desk from Ikea. I want to get one more to add. And then I can have like all my stickers and everything organized and in front of me. But yeah, that's my tip for keeping 
journaling supplies accessible, keep them all within reach. It's just like, um, I guess when I started playing guitar, a friend of mine said, just leave your guitar out. Like that's, you know, when I was doing lessons, keep your guitar where you're going to pick it up. And if you put, if you put it away, you're not going to pick it up as often or practice as often. And that would be the same with your journaling supplies. Don't get too organized that you, that you stuff everything away so that you can't see it. You want it within a hand's reach. Um, Teddy is six years old. Our story with Teddy is my daughter, all of her life, has talked me into everything. She wanted hamsters. Who ended up with two hamsters? Me. She wanted a guinea pig. Who ended up with a guinea pig? begged for this dog who shares a pillow with him at night. Anyway, I always tell her all the time, thank goodness you talked me into Teddy because he's, yeah, I love him to death. We all, we all love him to death. He's bad, but we love him. So yeah, he's a Havanese Maltese mix and yeah, he's just a big old baby. And Sarah had to have a dog and now she doesn't live at home anymore and I share a pillow with a dog. And I love them, so that's all good. Um, how many more questions? I kind of tried to like just jot everything down. Um, am I a small batch dyer? Yes, I am a very small batch dyer. I thought about getting the oven and investing in all of that and kind of going for it, but then that's just not what I wanted to do. I was wholesaling for a while and it was actually you know initially it was so flattering that people wanted to have my yarn and met some wonderful people through out wholesaling uh but it just became too much and i couldn't be creative anymore i was kind of dying in these huge quantities like can i get 60 of this colorway well then that colorway i just didn't want to dye it anymore and so i scaled all that back stopped wholesaling just have everything in my little etsy shop and uh I just like to play and not wholesaling enables me to just be more creative and I can manage it better as like a one man show. So I do do things in small batches. I used to just kind of throw everything in the shop and then post on Instagram that, you know, this colorway's here. And then somebody in all fairness said, can you just start doing shop updates so I can prep <laughs> and order? Cause by the time I see your story and go to your shop, you know, Sometimes it's picked over. So now I, I do try to do like a shop update and say, you know, this day, this time, I'm going to put this in the shop. So, but yeah, very small batches, sweater quantities and all those kind of things. I just, uh, I, you know what it keeps me busy is special orders. I And I love it. Like people will say, you know, can you come up with some kind of idea with these colors? I want to make a sweater and... I have this in mind. I love doing that, like special orders, or I've had people send me a picture, like a photograph, and say, you know, can you do a, a fade shawl with, with this idea? And I love doing that kind of stuff. So anyway, yeah, I'll just kind of pick away at some things that people were curious about. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go get supper started. I'm gonna go take this sweater off because I'm so warm, but I wanted to show you something, uh, a knit some knit content and uh, go throw a hoodie on and start supper and then we'll get Teddy out for a walk and then probably go to bed early. I'm tired. That was a good, it was a good work day. Got lots done. So anyway, hope everybody's having a good Thursday. Tomorrow morning I've got a meeting with my builder first thing in the morning to go over everything. And so I've got to do that. And then my mom and my daughter and I are going to go out for lunch. So that's that's kind of the morning and the afternoon. I'm going to go out with my best friend Jane for happy hour. And then they're having us over for supper. So that's my day. Tomorrow is a no work day, which is, which is great because I don't think my back could handle another day standing in the garage. So happy Thursday. I will see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.